Well, this is your devotion for Friday, May 8th, and we're looking at Psalm 96. We're going to look at the first eight verses and just listen to God's word. Let the spirit speak to your heart and see what kind of begins to surface as you hear God's word. Psalm 96, beginning in verse one. Listen to this invitation. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. That's a small g, all the idols, all the fake gods. He's to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. So ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. I love how the psalmist says, sing to the Lord a new song. It wasn't uh, long ago that we sang a song at Shoreline that was a new song called We Praise You, written by Matt Redman. I want to encourage you to go on YouTube and put in We Praise You, Matt Redman. You might have even noticed this song. It was in the giving back moment. And, and, and this song just expresses praise and celebration in the midst of challenging times. And so that's a new song because it was actually written this year in 2020. I encourage you again to go on YouTube, We Praise You, Matt Redman. Listen to it a couple of times and begin singing that song more, because we're going to sing that together as a congregation in the weeks and months to come. Also, I love how the psalm says to sing, to praise, to proclaim, that we use our mouths, our words, to declare God's goodness. I encourage you to talk about the goodness of God to people who love Jesus, to people who don't know Jesus, but who are open and curious and, and spiritually hungry and wondering. Let them hear you declare and sing and celebrate the goodness of God Almighty. And then the psalm also uses a word that some people kind of get nervous about, and that is to fear the Lord. Some people don't like that word fear, but, but really it's a great word. On the one hand, it means to have awe and respect and incredible reverence to God, that he is holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. But there is a sense of fear that is, is the heart racing and maybe even the palms sweating and just becoming alarmed and aware of who God is because you read the Bible and when people encountered God, they were overwhelmed. When people just encountered messengers of God, angels, they would fall as if they were dead. When Moses said, God, can I see you? God says, Moses, you don't know how this works. If you even beheld me, you would die. My glory is so amazing, but I'm going to, I'm going to, Moses, I'm going to put you in the shelter of these rocks. I'm going to cover you with my hand. That, that's what's called an anthropomorphism. God uses a, a human language that we can understand for a divine being. But, but God says, I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to go past you. And when I'm past you, Moses, I'll remove my hand and you're going to see a little bit of my fleeting glory. You can handle that. And actually Moses glowed. He was like spiritually radioactive for days by just getting a, a glimpse of the glory of God. There is a sense that when we come to the presence of the holy, holy, holy God, it overwhelms us. There's this trembling if we know who he is and who we are and then who he's made us through faith in Jesus. So God, this is our prayer, that we would walk in a holy fear of you, in awe and reverence and glory in who you are, that you are holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us sing to you. Let us articulate with our words who you are and celebrate your goodness. And may you be glorified in all the world, in your church, in our lives, and in our homes. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, Dr. Rick Alexander has a few things to share with you and get you caught up on what's happening at Shoreline and kind of in the Monterey community. God bless you, and I will see you Sunday morning at one of our three worship services. I'll be looking for you in the front row in online church. God bless you. Have a great week. Hello, Shoreliners. Well, as a result of our successful sheltering in place here in California, at yesterday's news conference, Governor Gavin Newsom outlined some modifications in our shelter in place order that will take effect today. Specifically, we are entering phase two of a four phase process at opening up our economy. First, we will be doing this in conjunction with our county health department following our state guidelines. Secondly, counties will be able to move uh, ahead at a faster rate, uh, provided several criteria are met. 
The first of which is that we're not seeing a big surge in new cases. Secondly, that we have uh, sufficient uh, personal protective equipment for our healthcare providers. Third, that our hospitals have the ability to handle the uh, number of new COVID cases. And lastly, that we're successful at ramping up our testing, our tracing and tracking capabilities, which will also be done through the uh, County Health Department. I wanted to introduce you to a valuable source of information, and that is the County of Monterey Health Department's website. There's a lot of very good information on COVID-19, and the site is updated frequently. For example, our local data, if we check in to see where we are currently, we can see in this graph that we've seen a significant flattening of the curve, which I've outlined before, actually using this graph. But in addition, there's important demographic information. So for example, in Monterey County, the largest percentage of COVID cases are in the 24 to 34 age range, up to 30%. In addition, they outline COVID cases by race and ethnicity, gender, and region of residence. Surprisingly, 93940, which is the zip code for Monterey, we've only had nine cases to date. Then as we scroll down, we can see exposure risk and other clinical information. And this information is a few days old, but uh, as of last Wednesday, the total number of cases at the bottom here, 247, represents the number of positive COVID tests in Monterey County. This doesn't necessarily represent all the cases as many patients, such as family members that might have been infected, haven't been tested, and if they develop symptoms, are assumed to be COVID positive as well. Nonetheless, it's an exceedingly small number for a population in Monterey County of over 400,000, as I've said before. As we move forward in modifying our stay-at-home order and enter stage two, I think it's important to realize what it is not. This is not a return to normal as we will have to practice social distancing and continue to wear face masks in public, probably until we get an effective vaccine, as COVID-19 will still be spreading. California is also gradually reopening only where we can reduce risk, such as in Monterey County. The governor has also made it clear that as counties do well in their opening up, uh, we may be uh, able to accelerate that and enter stage three and stage four earlier than our neighbors. But that will be dependent on control of the outbreak and having good data. Moving to stage two does include expanded retail with curbside pickup and associated manufacturing and supply chains, examples of which are bookstores, clothing stores, florists, sporting goods, as well as daycare centers. It does not include offices seated at dining restaurants, shopping malls, or outdoor museums, which will occur later. Successful opening up of the economy is predicated on the continued control of the pandemic. New cases are expected, but we want to control the rate of new infections. This is going to require industry guidance and cooperation. This is an example of some of the responsibilities that industries will have, and they'll be guided through this through our health department and other health professionals. This will also be watched carefully by the state who will be monitoring COVID cases throughout the various counties of California. Well, I hope you found this update on where we're headed at this time helpful. For more detailed information, please check out the county and the state's public health websites. They're very accessible and have a lot of great information. In closing this week, I'd like to remind people that practicing social distancing does not mean spiritual distancing. And please remember to follow Shoreline online with Pastor Kevin's very good and meaningful devotionals throughout the week 
and also check out our live streaming service on Sundays. In addition, you can check out the website for other ways to continue to be connected with Shoreline. There's lots of information on small groups, Bible studies, and lots of other opportunities to stay connected and grow in your faith. God bless you and have a great week.